For me, I had to get off the treadmill, and my treadmill was all the ministry going on in my life. A lot of things were happening, and a lot of great things were happening, but a lot of things were happening. I wasn't happy with how I was leading, wasn't happy with how I was parenting, et cetera. My wife and I were fine. Well, I, I need to do a better job there. And I said, Lord, I, I need something to stop. Because I started ministry 20-something, seven years ago, and it's just been gone, stop all that time. And it's going boom, 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 boom. But it's not necessarily good. Bigger is not necessarily better. Do I want to save the world? Most definitely. I just want to save it the way God wants me to save it. So I had to get off the treadmill. And I said, Lord, I, I got 90 days. I'm going to take 90 days off. And I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what you're going to do. But I'm just going to make myself available. I don't have all the business of the Rock Church or anything to distract me. And I'm just going to be with, do what you want me to do. Then something happened. Two days before... I started the sabbatical. June 1st was my first day. So May 30th, I was in my house here in San Diego, 70-degree weather. I'm in the house. So it's about 70, give or take. Bear with me on the details. It's a comfortable temperature. And I'm having a conversation with a guy named Marcus Preciado who works here. He's standing about six feet in front of me. And as I'm talking... I noticed this white smoke start to come out of my mouth. Now, I grew up in New York, and I understand white smoke coming out of your mouth when it's cold, <laughs> okay? And for all y'all West Coasters, or, or if you don't, if, depending on where you're from, if you don't understand the hawk. <laughs> y'all have hawks out here that you can see. On the East Coast, we have the hawk. There's only one. And this is what it sounds like. If you call up your, your friend and say, yo, man, the hawk is out, that means no matter what you put on, you're going to be cold. <laughs> Can I get amen? Anybody from the East Coast know what I'm talking about? Okay, so that's the hawk. So I, I get the hawk. And, and I'm in my house here in San Diego, 70 degrees outside. I'm in the house, so it's 70 degrees inside the house, whatever, give or take. And I'm talking, and this white smoke is coming out of my mouth. And in the instant, my brain's going, that shouldn't be happening. I, I'm in the house. I'm in San Diego. I'm not, I, I, what's going on? And then as I'm kind of talking, processing this white smoke, this brown ash came out of my mouth. Now, when you exhale white smoke, or it's not even smoke, it's just condensation from cold air, it comes out as you exhale. This brown ash stuff came out independently of my exhale. It came out as I was just talking, it just came out on its own, and I'm looking at it, tripping. Marcus is going, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and then it just came out about three feet. You ever see the Green Mile? You all see the movie The Green Mile? It was like that. It, it, it wasn't like little, this is, this is little, little firefly things, but it just came out and it, and, it, and it just disappeared and dissipated and gone. We were screaming. <laughs> He's like, yo. Did you, I said, I said to him, did you see that? He's like, yeah, I saw it, man. It was coming right at me. Which I now think was the issue. It was coming at him. It was. Uh, <laughs> we looked on the floor. It was, we thought maybe something fell. On, it was like we could see it and like study it and put it under the microscope and, you know, study its DNA. But it was gone. So he's like, he, he thought it was a prank. He said, did you. Play. I said, brother, that wasn't a trick. Did you just eat something? No, I didn't eat nothing. You take pills. No, I, no man, that, 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 that wasn't me. So he said, call your doctor. So I called my doctor. <laughs> Literally, and I had the same doctor since uh, uh, 30 years, since 1983. Same doctor. I said, doc, this is what happened. He goes, I, 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 there's no explanation. I, I just won't even, I'm not even going to guess. I couldn't even make anything up. Then I called one of my spiritual mentors and I said, here's what happened. He said, oh, that was spiritual. Now, I don't believe a Christian can be demon-possessed. But the reason I read that story to you is because in that story, the demon possession in that story was, the, the demon possession in that story manifested itself unlike what we see on TV. It wasn't violent. It was a guy who was blind and mute. I don't believe a Christian can be demon-possessed, and I don't believe a, a, a dirty demon was in me. But I believe that, that, unclean, that there was an uncleanness spiritually that needed to come out of me. 